After winning the Rome Prize, I had arrived in Italy in September with the intention to spend the year concentrating on learning from the history of ancient Roman architecture and Renaissance art. Meanwhile, back in New York, I had started building a new studio. As my work developed in Rome, I was about to begin producing larger sculptural architectural spaces when I was forced to return to New York. I was lucky to have my studio almost finished and nearing the point where I could set up and continue to work there. My work has always been about architecture, and from the very start I built models to photograph. In the late 80s and early 90s, I also built larger sculptural installations. But only recently have I felt compelled to design new structures, first specifically for photos, but secondly to imagine them built life-size for use in real space. Right now, I'm trying to work with abstract, geometric, asymmetrical, unsystematic fragments. Sometimes I start with one fragment, then make several more, putting them together in different configurations to see how they look. In a way, this resulted from playing with the modular forms of a space like Safdi's habitat in the Overlap House in Tokyo by Akahisa Hirata. I like to see what happens as I simplify and mess with the parts, taking them out of context and repurposing them. I'm considering these as objects for photographs, a sculpture, or architectural space. They could take any one of those three forms. The tan house on water model was made of foam core and mat board for a photograph, and then I rebuilt it in wood just to make it last as an object. The labyrinth, using five spokes around a second floor central courtyard exposed to the sky above, evolved out of the solo pavilions and Santa Teresa duplex photos. This new spiral configuration has become a proposal akin to an earthwork, a life-size space which could function as an experimental multifamily dwelling, provisional, modifiable, by the inhabitants. I also built this crazy staircase model and I needed a base to set it up. As I was moving into the studio and looking at the post-construction debris and chaos at the edge of the opening in the landscape, I dug these old decayed cinder blocks out of the earth and stacked them. Having just returned from ancient Rome, I'm seeing my own place in time in the light of the way Rome is built up out of layer and layer of history. When I returned, I had to start over again and tried to reconnect with the work I had begun there. But in this new and very different context of the global pandemic, the content was transformed by a new context. At the Academy, I had a dialogue with other artists and scholars, but I was still working alone in the studio there concentrating on building fairly crude models and thinking about the intersections that created piazzas or outdoor living rooms throughout the ancient streets. So I took what were the voids created by the asymmetrical unplanned streets of ancient Rome and turned them into the positive forms of a lounge or pod. I made one that I like to think of as a refuge for individuals or groups of one or two people. As singular enclosed spaces, they grew out of the hybrid form surrounded by water that I was making for the photos. Only now I imagined creating individual intimate spaces and placing them outside on the streets, in an art fair coffee shop or scattered throughout the Piazza Navona. Just before the pandemic arrived and I had to leave, I had begun to plan the their construction out of cross laminated timber and was on the verge of signing a contract with a manufacturer in Northern Italy. In order to provide them with dimensions, I enlisted another fellow, my friend Matt, working with virtual reality, to scan the eight by 10 foot model and provide them with a 3D digital model from which they could derive the measurements they needed. In the process, we also built a virtual reality model of the space, texture mapped the surface in a pattern akin to the CLT and dropped the structure into a landscape. 
in the end, this virtual reality experience embodied an eerie but prescient, almost ideal form of solitude. 